In this experiment, we're going to make the ester ethyl ethanoate. Now, making the ester, as usual, is very easy. We just add some ethanol to ethanoic acid with some concentrated sulfuric acid and reflux it for a few minutes. The clever bit, as always afterwards, is then separating out your desired product from all the undesired products and unused reactants. And we'll do that by distillation. And then we'll purify our product by a mixture of solvent extraction and further distillation. And we'll see what our percentage yield ends up as. In the instructions, it talks about using a 50 cubic centimetres uh, round bottom flask, but we're going to be using 100 cubic centimetres. So we put it on the balance, uh, zero it. And then we add approximately 20 mils of ethanol to the sample. Reweigh it and get the exact mass of ethanol we've added. That's 15.87 grams. Okay. Now, to this we're going to add our ethanoic acid and then the concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst, put in a few anti-bumping granules, then put it to, on to reflux for about 10 minutes. Now make sure you're wearing gloves when you're adding, handling the ethanoic acid and the concentrated sulfuric acid. So this is, uh, this is the 20 mils of the ethanoic acid. And this is four mils of the concentrated sulfuric acid, which will be the catalyst for the reaction. Okay. Then a few anti-bumping granules. And give it a wee swirl around, just make sure things are well mixed up. Then we'll take it over and put it in our heating mantle. Roll the condenser into position. Okay. Turn the water on. Cool down the condenser. And then we just bring it to a gentle simmer and we'll leave it simmering for 10 minutes. So while the sample is refluxing we can work out the theoretical yield of ethoethanoate. And we're assuming that ethanol is a limiting reactant and we get 100% yield, which of course we won't. So the number of moles of ethanol is the mass divided by the gram formula mass which is 46 so we started off with 0 0.345 moles of ethanol the reaction shows one mole of ethanol produces one mole of ethyl ethanoate so the number of moles of our ester will be 0 0.345 so the mass of our product will be 0 0.345 times the gram from a mass of ethoethanoate, which is 88. So we should produce 30.36 grams. The sample has been refluxing now, simmering away quite nicely for about 10 minutes. And hopefully you can see the condenser in action, you can see some of the product dripping back down from the condenser into the reaction mixture. So what we're going to do now is turn off the heat, let it cool down and then we're going to rearrange the apparatus to allow us to distill over our product. 
In the reaction mixture here, we've got our product. We've got the ethyl ethanoate plus water, but we've also got some unused reactants. There'll still be some ethanol and ethanoic acid in there. Of all those components, the ester has got the lowest boiling point, so we should be able to separate off our product from our, our desired product by distillation and the first thing that comes off should be the ester. So we'll just let that cool down for a few minutes. I now want to distill off the ester. So I rearranged the refluxing apparatus to turn it into distillation apparatus. And I'm going to collect, it tells me to collect about two thirds of the reaction mixture. So I'm going to collect the product of the distillation in a small conical flask which, in which I have marked off 30 cubic centimetres, which is roughly two thirds. So if you look at the flask in which I'm collecting the distillate, you can see it's just come up to about the 25 mark. So I need about another five mils and that will be two thirds of the reaction mixture distilled over. So in a minute or two I will turn down, turn off the heat and uh, that will be the initial distillation completed. During which I should have got over into this flask all the ester and probably just a little bit of some of the unreacted reactants which will then further purify. So here's our approximately 30 mils of our distillate. So it's going to contain our ester, ethyl ethanoate, and it will also contain small quantities of the water, unreacted ethanol, and unreacted carboxylic acid. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the carboxylic acid. So pour the distillate into the separating funnel. And then we're going to add 10 mils of 2 mils beta sodium carbonate solution. Now, this being a base will react with any of the unreacted carboxylic acid or any of the H plus ions from the catalyst and some carbon dioxide gas will be evolved. So, not too much fizzing, that's quite a good sign. So, we'll stop it and give it a bit of a shake. Releasing, open the tap to release any carbon dioxide pressure that's built up. So do that three or four times. Okay. So any of the acid impurities will now be neutralised and will be in the aqueous layer. So we'll just leave this a few minutes for the two layers to separate. Then we'll remove the aqueous layer and uh, we'll, that will get rid of our acid impurities. So we'll just leave it now for a few minutes. Right, I've left it for a few minutes and the two layers are quite subtle but if you look carefully, you'll see the interface just about here. It'll be more obvious when you're doing it in reality than looking at the video. So, our ethyl ethanoate is the upper layer. The lower layer is our aqueous, which has got our acidic impurities in it. So, remove the stopper and we'll run off the aqueous layer and get rid of it. We do this quite slowly because it's quite hard to see this interface. Hopefully it'll be more obvious when it comes down to the thinner part. Yeah. 
So the interface is just about here at the moment. So it's not too bad to see actually in reality. Okay. So in here I've got my aqueous waste, which I'm just going to get rid of. And up here I've got my ethylethanoate. Right, so the next thing we do to further purify the ethylethanoate is we're trying to get rid of any unreacted ethanol. And we do that by adding some calcium chloride solution. So I add the calcium chloride solution. And once again, give it a few good shakes. Opening the stopper just to relieve any pressure. And again, we'll clamp that, leave the layers to separate, and or ethanol should go into the aqueous calcium chloride solution layer. Right, so once again, we're going to run off the aqueous layer, which should this time should contain any of the unreacted ethanol, keeping the ethylethanoate in the separating funnel. So, let's carefully run off the bottom aqueous layer. We'll slow it down when it gets okay. Let's move this a bit more. Okay, so this is our again our waste aqueous solution. So we'll just chuck that. So here we've got our ethylethanoate. We've got rid of any carboxylic acid. We've got rid of any ethanol. The last thing we're going to do is just get rid of any remaining water. And to do that, we're going to just run it all into a small conical flask. And then we're going to add a little bit of calcium chloride, which will absorb any of the water. That is the remaining. So we add the calcium chloride and we'll just shake it around for a couple of minutes. Okay, for the final stage, I'm going to just carefully decant the ester from the conical flask into a round bottom flask for a final distillation. So I just want to carefully pour it in, leaving the calcium chloride in the conical flask. And we'll get most of the ethylethane over. Obviously, this is a place where you get a little bit of transfer losses. Okay, so. That's, by now we've got pretty pure ethylethanoate, but just to make it really pure, we're going to do one final distillation. So, add a few anti-bumping granules. Put it into the heating mantle. Set it up for distillation. Now, according to the instructions, it says collect what comes over between seventy four and seventy nine degrees C. So, put a thermometer in, and we're going to collect the product in this pre-weighed uh, conical flask. 
So make sure you've got the weight of this flask before you start. Okay, so we turn on our water. And turn on our heater. Now it does also say in the instructions that to reduce losses, this could be cooled in an ice bath while you do the distillation. We're not actually bother, going to bother doing that, but just be aware that there might be some further losses by the evaporation of our product over here. Okay, so we'll leave that to heat up. Now, in the distillation apparatus that we have available at the moment, the thermometer is sitting in a glass envelope, so, which means that the temperature of the thermometer it lags behind the temperature in the reaction vessel. So I suggest you collect anything that comes over at a temperature less than 75 degrees, which in this case is essentially almost all of the sample, just a little bit left over. So collect anything that comes over at a temperature less than 75 degrees and hopefully that should be a very pure sample of ethyl ethanoate. So finally, we re-weigh the conical flask along with the product, which is 57.78 grams. So, add that in here, so 57.78 grams, and we can now work out our percentage yield. So the mass of ethyl ethanoate that I made was 20 point four seven grams my theoretical yield was thirty point three six so the percentage yield is twenty point four seven divided by thirty point three six times a hundred which comes to sixty seven point four percent which isn't too bad okay so finally the discussion over the page give reasons why the yield was less than 100%? Well, some of that was due to the fact that the condensation reaction for making the ester is in equilibrium, so you would not expect it to go to 100% completion. And then of course there's transfer losses that should inevitably be incurred throughout the process. And then I asked you to explain why reflux apparatus was used for the initial reaction. Well, because we're using heat to speed up the reaction, uh, the ester we make, ethylethanoate, which is quite volatile, would all have been lost if uh, we had an open beaker. If we had a closed beaker, we could have an explosion. So we use a condenser to recondense the volatile ester back into the re reaction mixture.